going to talk about the add function. And the add function is like many of the other math functions that you have here. I would describe all this using the add, but all of this apply, applies to the math functions you'll see over here. First of all, let's go to add int that you see here that we have using, and I'm going to display help. <clears throat> and if we look here, when the add instruction receives power flow, it adds the two operands in one and in two of the same data type and stores the sum and the output variable q, also of the same data type. Okay, now in this example here, it takes the value stored in register 2, adds 1 to it, and stores the result into register 2. When the function is done, passes power flow to the right, which will then energize that coil there. Now what you'll find is that this executes every time for each scan that the controller is uh, operating through, just as long as this is closed. So if you have a push button and you close that push button for say three seconds, it will continue to add, continue to add for the entire time that uh, that contact is closed. I've got some examples. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. But what the help file it shows you is to correct that, you route your input here into a one-shot coil. And it will only be enabled for one scan. Okay? So in order to re-enable it, the contact has to open up and then close again. And once you have this set up right here, you'll use the M1 input into your add function and you will only get one input for every transition. Now with this new setup here, your push button would be coming on an input one. It would cause this transition coil, the one shot coil, to go on for only one scan. These contacts would close for one scan and the add in would only add one to the register two. So let's go see how this works. We come back over here to main. What I have set up here is in first scan, we will zero registers count one, count two, and count three. I'm going to zero those out for the first time. And I have it set up down here. I'm looking for a max count of 60. Okay, so we're going to count, we're going to count up count two until we get to 60. And then we're going to look at the different results here. In counter one, what I'll be doing as long as the, we're not to 60, we will be counting whenever T second is on. It's a one second counter, which means at 500 milliseconds it's on, 500 milliseconds it's off, and it will keep counting. So we'll count scans whenever T second is on. Now here on rung three, what I've set up is again I've, I've got T second as my input. Now that could just as easy be a push button, but it's on for 500 milliseconds and off for 500 milliseconds. And it's driving this positive transition coil located at M1. Now I'm using that coil and the contacts right here to increment my counter. And that will increment only once per second whenever T second goes positive. Now I've got another counter here that will increment every scan. So over the 60 seconds that we'll be counting, you'll see I should come up with looks like about 14,000 about 14,000 counts. And if I do the math on that 14,023, that works out to an average scan time of about 4.3 milliseconds. Okay? And then here's my comparison. I'm comparing count two for maximum of 60, and we'll shut it all down when we get to 60. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this. Okay, we've restarted our counter. You can see the count here is going up. Whenever T second is on, the count up here updates. T second is off, it does not update. And you see it's jumping quite a bit each time we come down over here, watch T second, 
you never see this light up because it's only on for one scan. You never see these contacts close because they're only on for one scan every second. But you know something is happening because you look over here and you see this count is incrementing. Every second it keeps going. Now this counter is adding every scan it keeps counting. So we'll watch this out. We've got another about another 15 seconds left to go. We can watch this. We can see our comparison counter down here. Okay, 54 is less than 60, so it's not on yet. As soon as we get to 60, there we go. We reached our max. And in this case, we've got 13,979 in count three. Count two, we only have 60 because we were only counting positive transitions. And now over here we look, we should have about half of 14,000, just short of seven. So if you look at this, when you do an add function, you only want to add one for every occurrence of something happening. You need to use a positive transition, transition coil. And that would account for any of these functions over here. You only want to have the operation take place once. Okay, in the next, uh, we'll talk about adding and subtracting, and we'll go on from there.